Hey you guys, what's up? It is I, Tylia Flores, with another video. And before we get into this video, please like, share, and subscribe if you're brand new. If you're brand new, welcome to my channel. My name is Tylia Flores. I am a 26-year-old disability activist, radio show host personality on Asheville FM, and multiple-time Polish author. And for today's video, I'm going to be talking about finding your own reflection as a person with a disability. And this inspiration for this video comes from an illustration that was drawn to me by my good friend and illustrator from Long Island, Chuck. Um, me and Chuck met eight years ago. And since that time we met, we've developed such a bond through my writings, my advocacy, my illustrations. He's done so much work in helping me build this foundation for stomping on CP and drawing some awesome illustrations that I can't wait to release on the eighth anniversary of stomping on CP on November 8th. So be sure to follow me on Facebook at the st at stomping on cerebral palsy with Tylea. And for those of you who want to follow me on my radio show page, follow me at the stomping on cerebral palsy radio show with dj ty and for those of you who want to follow me on instagram follow me at stomping on cpe with ty leah so with that being said yesterday he surprises me with this illustration of me as ariel from little mermaid and for those of you that have been following my story for quite some time i've always told the story on how when I was a kid in the third grade, I wasn't allowed to play in field day because it wasn't accessible for me. Um, talk about ableism, it wasn't accessible for me. And that was the first, like, that was the first realization that I wasn't accepted into society as a disabled child. And growing up from that point on, I, used to always watch The Little Mermaid when I was having a bad day or I felt very empty and very isolated living in this ableist society. And I didn't like my reflection. I would just turn on the TV and watch The Little Mermaid. And if they aired it on the Disney Channel, I was happy. And if they aired Lizzie McGuire on Disney Channel that same day, I was even more happy because I wanted to be just like those two characters. I wanted to be like Ariel from The Little Mermaid because she was a mermaid, but she didn't want to be under the sea. And then Lizzie McGuire because I thought she had the perfect life. And I wanted to be like Hillary Duff. I wanted to be blonde hair, blue eyes, and I just idolized Hillary. She was my shield from my reality of being disabled and not being happy with myself and for that i i'm grateful that i had that experience but now i am able to be comfortable in my own body and feel sexy in my disabled body and say you want to know what i am disabled i do have cerebral palsy i do have a, a big giant scar on the side of my leg but i'm sexy in my own way and i'm beautiful and words cannot tear tear me down the mirror can't break its glass anymore because if it does i'm just gonna pick up the pieces and glue them all together again and you know i know i just quoted christina aguilera but it's true when it comes to finding your own reflection in this ableist society i have to say the self-love journey always starts with you and the journey ends with you and the message that you want to spread. If you allow people in society to keep throwing rocks at your mirror and the glass breaks and you don't pick it up, you're allowing society to win. You're allowing society to be right about the depictions of you and the representation of you. And let me tell you something, society is not right when it comes to people's representation of disabilities that we're now just getting 
although we've we've been fighting for it since the 1940s, since the Holocaust, since X, Y, and Z. Be and then we have people like Judy Human that said, it's okay to speak out. It's okay to be who we are. It's, it's okay to embrace our disabilities and share our stories. And for that, I thank Judy Human for a ton. And for those of you who haven't watched Crip Camp, what are you freaking waiting for? You need to go watch that movie now. Um, honestly honestly but like when it comes to defining yourself and finding that reflection it all starts with you and you have to remind yourself that you are beautiful in your own unique way and you are handsome in your own unique way despite your disability and there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with having a swan finger there's nothing wrong with being different because if destiny wanted the world to be the same, if the creator of the earth, regardless of what you believed in, wanted everybody to be the same, wouldn't they have made the world the same? Wouldn't they have made people the same? You know, so never be ashamed of your disability because of what people around you tell you or what society projects on you or how society labels you because you're awesome in your own way and you're beautiful in your own way and you have a story to tell. Your reflection of yourself, your depiction of yourself, your wheelchair, your walker, your crutches, that's part of your story. That gives you the opportunity to tell your story from your point of view and it gives you an opportunity to change the world. Like, for example, I consider I consider my disability to be one of the greatest opportunities, one of the greatest gifts that I could ever have. You want to know why? Because it allows me to see the world in a unique perspective through a different lens versus if I wasn't disabled, I would just be ordinary. Yeah, I would still be Tylea, but I wouldn't have the same life story. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't change it for the world. Yes, there are days where I'm like, oh my God, the CP's having a party and I can't take it and I just can't hide it. I have those days. But what I have to remember is it doesn't define my reflection. It doesn't define what I can and cannot do. It doesn't define, it doesn't define any negative any, anything negative that has to come out of society's mouth. Yes, your disability does deteriorate, you, does stop you from certain things, but the one thing it doesn't stop you from doing is living your life and taking control of your reflection and your story and the ability to be who you are and the chances that you have each and every day to see the world. You know, each and every day, you know, and this is why I kind of like, I kind of like stop going on social media often every single day. People, people post that, oh, my disability, my, di my disability is, makes it so much more harder. And sometimes people just focus on the negative side of disability. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. You could have one or two bad days. But the issue, the issue with that is, is that they don't take the opportunity to, to say, hmm, I'm, al I'm alive today. I'm in this society. Now, what could I do to make it better? What could I do to make myself feel better? Because that's all part of your reflection. That's all part of the journey that you have. You can you either have one or two options each and every day that you wake up with your disability. You could either say, oh, well, I have a disability. It, it, it defines me in a negative way. And I'm going to let it label me in a negative way because of what the stigma say and what society says, right? And you could continue to let people throw rocks at your glass and not pick up the pieces and say, you know what, my mirror is stronger than this. 
Or you can say, you know what? My mirror is stronger. My disability uh, may make life harder, but I'm going to live my freaking life to the best of my ability. And y'all could keep throwing rocks at my mirror all you want to. Uh, but even if you do, I'm still going to pick the mirror up and I'm still going to keep shining my story and telling my story and smiling through that. So with that being said, you guys, I hope you enjoy this video. This is Talia Flores over now. Bye, you guys.